8.1 points lines planes and angles basic terms a point line and plane are three basic terms in geometry that are not given a formal definition yet we recognize them when we see them point and line a line is a set of points any two distinct points determine a unique line any point on a line separates the line in three parts the point and two half lines a ray is half line including the endpoint a line segment is part of the line between two points, including the endpoints. So these are descriptions of each, diagrams and symbols. So a line, here we have line AB, and that's how we would write it as a symbol. We have ray AB, so it's kind of like a line, but it doesn't have that second um, little arrow to connect it forever. So it's ray AB. Ray BA, you see how it's going B to A? So that's ray BA, and then line segment is just a piece of it, and we would say segment AB. Plane. We can think of a plane as a two-dimensional surface that extends infinitely in both directions. Any three points that are not the same line, non-collinear points, determine a unique plane. So this would be a plane, that's what it looks like. Two lines in the same plane that do not intersect are called parallel lines. A line in a plane divides the plane into three parts, the line and two half planes. So if you have a line that divides a plane, you actually have three parts, the line and then the two halves. Two planes that do not intersect are called parallel planes. Angles. An angle is the union of two rays with a common endpoint. So here is what we have as an angle. So we have your initial side that doesn't move, your terminal side, which makes the angle. The vertex is where it all meets. The vertex is the point common to both rays. The sides are the rays are, that make the angle. And there's several rays, uh, ways that we can name this angle. We can name this angle B because that's the vertex. We can name it angle a b c because it goes in order a b c you could also name this angle c b a so it just goes in order c b a a b c or you can name it by just the vertex do you notice they both have b in common so you can just say angle b The measure of an angle is the amount of rotation from its initial side to its terminal side. Angles can be measured in degree, radians, and gradients. Angles are classified by their degree measure. Right angles have a measure of 90 degrees. Acute angles have a measure less than 90 degrees. Obtuse angle has a measure greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. Straight angles have a measure of 180 degrees. So here is an each example of our example of each of them. A right angle, we know what that is. It can be symbolized by that little box or saying it's 90 degrees. Acute angle is between 0 and 90. Obtuse is 90 between uh, 90 and 180. And a straight angle is a line and it's 180 degrees. Types of angles. Adjacent angles. Angles that have a common vertex and a common side but no common interior points. Complementary angles. Two angles whose sum of the measure of angles is 90 degrees. Supplementary. Two angles whose sum of the measure is 180 degrees. You might remember those two terms from geometry class. All right, alternate interior angles are interior angles on the opposite sides of the transversal. So transversal, you might these words might be coming back to you from geometry. This is the transversal. It's a line that cuts parallel lines. So alternate interior angles are just that. They're alternate, but on the inside. So 3, 6, and 4, and 5 are alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles are exterior angles on the opposite sides of the transversal. So again, we have the transversal. So they're like alternate uh, spaces. So 1 and 8 and 2 and 7 are alternate exterior angles. Corresponding angles are one interior, one exterior on the same side of the transversal. So here's our transversal. And corresponding angles, do you notice our parallel lines in blue? They're like in the same position, top, top, uh, if we want to do other ones. So that's 1 and 5. 2 and 6 are also uh, 3 and 7 and 4 and 8. So 4 and 8, you see how that's the bottom of the parallel line? Bottom of the parallel line. They're like in the same position. All right, descriptions. So we have line AB. 
half line, ray AB, ray BA, line segment AB, open line segment AB, and half open line segment. So go ahead and pause the video and uh, look at each diagram and the symbol for them. All right, example one. We're going to use line AD to determine the solution to each part. All right, let's find, oh, look at these symbols back from chapter two. Let's find the intersection of ray AB and ray DC. So I drew the line again for us so we can actually draw this out. So we have ray AB. So AB and it's a ray, so it goes forever. Then we have ray DC. So D to C and it goes forever to the left because it goes in order of alphabet. DC, that means it's going backwards. So we want to know where they intersect. They intersect here and here. That's a segment. They, in, they intersect from A to D. So they intersect segment AD. All right, B. We have ray AB. Then we have ray DC, so D to C. And we want to see where, what happens if we union them. If we put them together, what happens? So if we put these together on our picture, imagine it all as one. It's a line now because we have double arrows. So we actually have line AD. All right, part C, we have segment AB, intersection, ray CD. So we have ray AB, or sorry, segment AB, segment AB, and we want to know where it intersects with ray CD, and that's a ray. We want to know where they intersect. They don't intersect at all. They don't cross over each other at all. So we can say that that's an empty set uh, or we can say empty set. Alrighty, part D. We have segment AD union. Oh, that's that that's a kind of a new symbol for us. That little open circle one. What is that? That's just a half open ray. So let's go ahead and draw this out. We have segment AD, so AD. And then we want to know where it unions with CA. So if we put it together, it actually creates a ray. The whole thing is just a ray, because if you look at it as... Oops, if you look at it as one whole thing, it's a ray. And it's going to the left, so it's ray DA. All right, we're going to practice this again, but with some more stuff here. All right, so we have of a picture, a figure. You don't need to know what that is, but it's a figure. All right, let's uh, draw it out first. So you might have to pause the video and copy this figure four times. Copy it four times, pause it, and then come back. All right, so we have ray BC, so B to C, and that's a ray. And then we have ray BG. And we want to union them. So if we union them, that means put them together. So when we put them together, do you notice it creates an angle? It creates an angle. So we can name this a few things. We can say that's angle G, B, C goes in order. Or angle C, B, G. And do you notice they all have B in common? You could also say angle B. All three of those are the same exact thing. All right, I can erase if you have a 
Surface or an iPad, you can erase as well. But that's why I had you copy four of these diagrams. If you if I didn't put it in there, I honestly can't remember. Let's do part B. All right, so part B, we have ray AB. So AB, and it's a ray. And then we want to intersect it with ray CB. So CB, and it goes this way. Now, where do they intersect? What do they have in common? They have this in common right here. That's where it intersects, and that's a segment. So we say segment A to C, segment AC. All right, part C. We have ray BE, so B to E. We have a ray. And then we want to intersect it with ray BF, so BF, so B to F. Now, where do they intersect? They only intersect at this point right here, which is just a point B. That's not an angle because we want to know what do they intersect, not union intersect they intersect at b all right part d part d we have angle d b g so d b g and that's an angle and then we have angle a b d so a b d and we want to know where do they intersect. So they actually intersect the ye or the um, pink meets the green right here at this ray. So it's actually ray BD. Determining complementary and supplementary angles in the figure below, we see that ABC is 31 degrees. Let's determine CBD and CBE. So first we want to determine CBD. So we have to figure out what that is. CBD. So we want to find this right here. That whole picture, this whole picture, that's a 90 degree angle, meaning it's complementary. So we know that these two angles put together is 90 degrees. We don't know this missing angle, so we say it's x. But we know x plus 31 degrees is supposed to equal 90 degrees. So let's just solve for x. We solve for x how we always solve for x. We subtract 31. And when we do, we get 59 degrees. So this angle right here is 59 degrees. All right, now we want to find angle CBE. So CBE. I want to find this angle right here. This whole thing. So the whole thing itself is supplementary. EBA is a supplementary angle. Supplementary is 180 degrees. So we know the whole thing is 180 degrees. And what we know is that little piece is 31 degrees. So 180 minus 31 degrees. And we get 149 degrees. If angle ABC and angle CBD are complementary and ABC is 26 less than CBD, determine the measure of each angle. All right, so we have two angles, angle ABC and CBD. We know that they're complementary, so complementary is 90 degrees. 
So we know when we add those two angles, it's going to be 90 degrees. So we know angle ABC plus angle CBD is 90 degrees. We know that much. Then it tells us ABC is 26 less than CBD. We don't know any angles right now, but we know ABC is 26 degrees less than CBD. So ABC, we don't know it, but we know, now when we say we don't know it, that means X. We don't know it, but we know it's 26 less than. And we don't know CBD. So ABC, whatever it is, it's X minus 26 degrees because it's 26 less than the angle. And then angle CBD, that's just X degrees. And both of them together is 90. So we have 2X minus 26 equals 90 degrees. We're going to add 26 over. We get 2X equals 116 degrees. Divide by 2. And we get X is 58 degrees. So that means CBD is actually 58 degrees. Now ABC, let's plug in X. So ABC, we have 58 minus 26, and that's 32 degrees. If you do 58 and 32, guess what? You get 90. All right, angle ABC and ABD are supplementary, and the measure of angle ABC is five times larger than the measure of angle ABD. Determine ABC and ABD. All right, we have two angles, ABC, ABD. We know something about them. We know that they're supplementary, so that's 180 degrees. That means when we add them together, it's going to equal 180 degrees. Now, we don't know anything about these angles, but it does say that ABC is five times larger than ABD. So ABC is five five times larger than ABD. We don't know ABD, but it's X. And we know when we add them together, it's supposed to equal 180. So we have 5X plus X equals 180. That's 6X equals 180. Divide by 6. And we get 30 degrees. So that means X is 30 degrees. Let's plug in X, so 5 times 30, and we get 150 degrees. The figure shows two parallel lines cut by a transversal determine the measure of all the angles. Okay, here's a key word for you, parallel. Parallel and math actually mean same. They never cross. It's because they have the same slope. So same means we're going to have a lot of the same answers. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this chart to find our missing angles. So we're going to use alternate interior angles, alternate exterior, and corresponding angles. There's something on that chart that we did not put. So when they shared the same vertice. So sharing the same vertice, see how we have an angle here of 52 degrees? That means directly across from it is also 52 degrees. All right, then we can use all of our other information, alternate interior, alternate exterior, all of those types of angles to figure out what's missing. So we have angle 6 is 52. If we look, you see how this is on the top of the parallel line? That means on the top of the parallel line is 52 degrees. You see how they share the same vertice? That means this is 52 degrees. 
Now, if you don't know where to go from here, find another angle. You're missing angles next to it. You see how these are next to each other? They're always supplementary. So we can say 180 minus 52. And we get 128 degrees. So angle 1 is 128 degrees. You see how they share the same vertice? That means this is 128 degrees. All right, we have alternate interior angles now. 3 and 5 are alternate interior. That means this is 128. And you see how they share the same vertice? So this is 128. You see how there's all they're all the same numbers. There's only two numbers, and they all share them. That's because of the word parallel.